Hey guys, so I have a 2013 ILX here uh, with a 2.0 engine. I've got a check engine light for a uh, P0420. I'm gonna hook up my scanner here. OBD2 scanner, I'm just gonna plug it in here. Show you guys the code it's given me. I'm not gonna turn it on. Just with the ignition on. I'm going to hit enter. So we got a P0420 catalytic system, efficiency below threshold bank one. And a P permanent code. I'm gonna turn this off. That code is or the catalytic converter which is here mounted to the front of the engine. A um, few things that I'll be using. First thing I do, this stuff works wonders. PB Blaster, it's like WD-40 but times 100. So what I do is I usually soak my bolts and any nuts that I see prior to working on the car, maybe about 30 minutes at least. I mean, the longer you let it soak, depends on how much rust or corrosion there is, uh, the better for you. So what I did is I already went ahead and um, loosened everything up. So I'm just gonna show you guys how to remove the catalytic converter and match it up with a a new one that I purchased. So first step you want to do is disconnect the O2 sensor. Like I said, I'm not Superman. I already loosened everything up. Um, for the O2 sensor, there's a few different tools out there. Um, this is the guy that I use. You just have to be very careful. You don't strip it because if you put too much pressure, um, this could get loose and you can strip that and you, know, you don't want that. So just be very careful when you do it. So first step, take this guy out. So this is a sign that this O2 sensor is bad. Um, you see some white build up there. That is not a good sign. Um, this could be a cause um, that causes the cats to go bad. Second, what I do is remove this little top heat shield. There's three uh, 10 millimeter bolts. I have a little container to put my bolts. It's kind of handy, you don't lose them. Underneath that, once you remove the heat shield, there are four more screws, or I'm sorry, two screws, on one on each side, two nuts up top. Um, what I like to do after I remove the heat shield and I have access, um, I'll spray these guys down again since I didn't have access to them. And then I will go um, below and release everything down there. Um, I'll do my best to get the camera angle right. It is at night, but I do have my 
uh, flashlight on so hopefully um, it'll be clear enough for you to see all right so down below you obviously have the two main screws that with with a spring that hold down the pipe that goes all the way down um, to the muffler in the rear um, they have these flex springs so every time the car starts or you shift gears uh, prevents you know um, cracking or breaking so there's some movement um, but there is a donut gasket it's called um, that prevents any leaks so first what I did is I loosened these guys so like I said there's two one on each side these were at 12 millimeter and then what I did was I loosened then I loosened this guy it's 12 millimeter and one more up here and this bracket comes down like so it makes it easier when you're pulling up I mean you can technically do one of these and try to wiggle it out but I mean it's easier to just take out both and then on this far side there's one more right here and that is it from down below everything else is up top now from up top I'll loosen these guys Um, and then it has a EGR hose that goes down all the way to the bottom of the cat. And there's two little nuts down there, but I found it easier just to disconnect from the top up here. So let's do that. So now it's loose, it should just pop right out and actually stretch that. Um, there is a second O2 sensor down here, you just unplug it and that one I can remove once I have it out. Now I'm going to move it out and straight up. And now I have the complete catalytic converter out. That's what it looks like. That's the heat, AGR heater hose that I was telling you about. So what I'll do is I'll just open up these guys, 10 millimeter uh, nuts, and reuse that. Um, this is the aftermarket um, catalytic converter that I bought on rockauto.com I'm in California so it's a California direct fit really important if you're out here for smog and emissions in California pretty strict about that uh, pretty good brand I mean it comes with all brand new nuts and bolts and 
gaskets, so it's a direct fit, so there's no cutting or welding, it looks exactly the same, um, looks a little skinnier because this has the heat shield, all I'm going to do is just transfer the old one onto this guy. Um, and that's it. So I would just retrace my steps. Like I said, switch everything over to this guy. Um, and then I would recommend getting brand new O2 sensors. I mean, if you spend that much money on a brand new cat, um, it's recommended to do O2 sensors. Uh, with them as well uh, and usually I don't like to go cheap with O2 sensors I would go something that is OEM um, spec recommended Denso is a really good brand um, and also another thing that I like to do I use Seafoam Seafoam is an amazing um, thing you can use it for multiple things. Uh, the way I use it is I just put it in the gas tank and I'll do a full tank of gas with premium unleaded fuel. Um, you don't have to, but um, I do that. So you just get a clean, um, a burn cycle through, through the car that way. Um, this helps clean the injectors. It helps clean any carbon buildup. Um, it really does a lot. You can also, if you have sludge in your engine, you can also dump this in the motor before an oil change. Run it for like 10 minutes um, and then do your oil change. And that will clean up a lot of the gunk that's built up. So I'm going to go ahead and put all this stuff back and install it. I hope this video helped. Um, thank you guys for watching. One other thing that I should mention is when you need to order this part, uh, whether it be online from the dealer or a parts store, um, they will ask you for the engine family number, uh, which is located on the vehicle emission sticker. Um, it's usually on the hood somewhere, as you can see. Um, sometimes it's on like a shock tower on either side, but most of the time it is on the hood, um, up top. So it'll be this number here. Usually it'll be a few letters and then, um, the numbers will be the size of the engine. So this is a 2.0. So that's where the 2.0 is followed by a few more letters or numbers. Uh, but that is very important. That way you get the right one for your vehicle. Hope that helps.